And greetings. This again is not what we're going to be looking at, but we have use for this again today as I got this box from Goulet Pens. And uh, this is my birthday present to myself. Probably one of the last pens I'll be buying for quite a while as I don't typically buy many pens. But this one is special. So being a birthday present and all. So let's just get this out of here. And there's always extra stuff in the box. We don't need to worry about it. We just want to get this out. This is, of course, another sailor pen. And this is going to be my Slim Gear Pro. Uh, uh, my, uh, yeah, my whatever it's called. Uh, you know what they are. And it's a different box. Look at that. And again, the box is faced. That's always a nice thing, but it's a different box. Instead of the clamshell type box, we have a coffin style box here. And when we open it up, we have our typical uh, little emblem thing here for the proof of purchase. This is kind of curious. It's the same interior as the old box, but I guess they had a problem with their distributor. So let's just call that door two. And uh, here we are. We got... We got your typical items back here. A couple of cartridges and Mr. Cartridge Converter. And of course this pen is this one right here. And the baggie is closed. And this is the Sunset Over the Ocean. This is the Pro Gear Slim. Now, the standard Pro Gear is a little bit of a larger pen than this. This pen is more akin to the size, <coughs> excuse me, of a uh, Sailor Standard 1911. As you can see, the 1911, the, the little end caps, the finials are exactly in the same place. And they use the same 14 karat nib. Now, so many people make pen videos and stuff like that. I don't want to deal with that. I just want to show off my pen a little bit, and in order to do that, let's uh, let's open this package up here. So, again, this vellum is sealed up, and we pull the pen out, and you can see it's got some shimmer in the pla in the uh, resin, excuse me, in the plastic, and it has clear uh, end caps that are red, like sunset. They, too, have a little shimmer in them. That's kind of a nice touch. And uh, when we open this pen up, we find inside the section also has that glitter touch, which I very much like, and the rhodium-plated 14-karat music nib. This is the uh, music nib on this pen. I have a medium and a medium-fine, both which I find to be excellent pens. It has the in interior cap, the cap posts very well. You can find all kinds of videos, again, on uh, Pro Gear Slim model pens, and uh, and the differences between the Pro Gear Slim, the Pro Gear, the, you know, size comparisons with other pens. But I just kind of want to show off my little pen here. And uh, the special things, special touches, like the glitter in the clear cap, with my other pen, my other, my other uh, Pro Gear pen, the caps are clear. And even though the body is colored it doesn't have this glitter and the glitter is very evenly distributed all the way throughout the resin of the pen there's no there's no really bunchy spot it's very nice very nicely done uh, the one thing i can contest is the color of the colored band here which also has a little bit of shimmer to it is slightly lighter than the body of the pen now this of course is lighter just because it's a thinner material and uh, the ring will help keep this from cracking, the threads from cracking, if I drive it in too far. And as I've shown in the past, this is easily closed up. It sits nicely and closes very smoothly. And if we open it up, we will see that it's your standard sailor interior with the metal body and the nipple on the inside with the little gasket or the O-ring on the side so that it makes contact with this chamfer on the inside of the body as opposed to being at the bottom and I actually like that better 
because uh, I have I have uh, pens where the O ring is on the bottom, and when you close them, when I screw them on, I'm never really quite sure that they're tight, and sometimes they come loose over time. So let's ink this up, and uh, we'll pop in this converter. Again, this is the standard converter. It's not an international converter. The sailor has proprietary converters that they use, and so it has this wider mouth. And in fact, I see a little shimmer in this too. That's kind of interesting. <laughs> okay, so let's ink that up and see what happens. So we're back and always post your barrel. We're going to fill it with this carbon ink. Now this carbon ink is getting a little low, so I am going to attempt to use my syringe to fill it. And uh, you always want to clean a new nib. This uh, I didn't disassemble it, but I did rinse it out to make sure that there won't be any uh, residues inside of these from having manufactured the pen. So, or uh, storing the pen, anything like that. And you can see there's a little bit of water left in this, but uh, that water won't affect anything. We'll try to get that water out. Take a cloth and try to get that water to come out. There we go. Now we're going to just inject a little ink into our into our pen. Now you can see that uh, I don't have a lot of ink in here, but it's going to be enough to fill us up to where we need to be, which is right about there. Now I'm going to stick the pen, hopefully it won't spatter onto me, in, drive the cartridge in. And I actually had to completely disassemble this because there was some fuzz. There was a little fuzz inside of there, some plastic. And uh, I didn't know what that was all about. So now that we've got this pen filled up, we'll try to draw some ink down. I'm going to drive this up until I see a little bit of ink welling on the bottom you can see we've driven quite a bit of ink up into that feed and it's just starting to feed up now I can see it really starting to come up now I can see the ink up in the feed so let me uh, turn this over now with this carbon ink I always try to agitate the bottles a little bit before I actually use the ink the reason being that uh, it has micro particles into it in it and Sometimes that can be an issue. Let's drop that bit back in there, pop those bubbles, and let's see about just giving it a normal feed here. Okay, all the way down. Now we're going to bring it all the way up. And we have a full pen. That is excellent. Good news all the way around. So let's clean this up and get to writing. Now, as I said, this is a music nib pen, so it's got a slightly different character of line. I'm sure that everybody here is aware of the differences. A little ink on my hands here. Let's try to get rid of that. Let's get a clean, let's get a clean paper. Well, mostly clean paper. And clean up my nice new pen. There we go. And you can see the pen is very small. Now, if we compare this this pen to a standard, I got my standard right over here. Right here. This is the this is a Pro Gear standard. This has the 21 karat nib. And like I was saying, it has the sparkles in the barrel, but not in the tips. The clear plastic parts are are just that. They're, the colored parts are just clear plastic. They don't have that little accent of color in them. Now this is, of course, the standard model. And the Pro Gear Slim. The Pro Gear Slim is small, like the 1911. It has the 14 karat nib. And if I take out the Pro Gear stand, you'll see that these nibs are the same size. And when you want to judge the size of your pen with Sailor, it, you know that all the 14 karat gold nibs are going to be this smaller, shorter 
size of pen. As I showed earlier, these barrels are like exactly the same length. They're, they're exactly the same width, and they pretty much have the same taper. I would even venture to guess that I could probably put this cap onto this pen, see? <laughs> so, there you go, and uh, vice versa. So, yeah, I, I could make a Franken pen, but I don't really want to do that as I like this pen just the way it is. But the Pro Gear Slim is the same size with a 14 karat nib as a 1911 standard model. And then we would have the Pro Gear, which is the 21 karat nib. And uh, the 21 karat nib is slightly larger, has a little more bounce when I write, and uh, it's a nice feel, but the pen can be a little big in my hand as it is the fatter barrel. And I have a problem with my hand. I have an issue with this part of my hand right here where if the pen rests on that for too long, I get pain. So I like these smaller pens because they give me, the, they give me an option of being able to hold the pen in, at different angles so I don't have that problem. I always preferred larger pens when I was a younger man. In fact, all of my pens were larger. I had like this Mont Blanc or this, this Scribo or, my, um, or this uh, Pilot pen. These are all the pens that I preferred to write with when I was a younger man, and I still do write with them occasionally, but because of this development with my hand, I don't like to use them anymore. In fact, I used to use these larger pens for a lot of my drawing, and uh, oh, here I can show you this. This is the Pilot. Uh, this is a pen, and it has that O-ring that I was talking about. The O-ring is down here on the bottom of this, so it meets the base of the barrel. So when I screw that in, I can feel that, and it's nice and cushy. But the problem is, sometimes it lets go when I find the barrel is loose on that pen. With the Sailor pens, that O-ring is here on the inside. So when I go to put that barrel on, I spin the barrel down, and then there's a chamfer then it makes contact with that o-ring and then I know that I just twist it half a twist and it's on tight and it doesn't really tend to back up or get loose because it's solidly seated against the end of this uh, section here and then uh, screw that on there so let's take a look and see how this writes so we'll get some get some paper up here well, let's write on this side this pen is empty, and it has now served its purpose, so we will move it away. And again, this is a music nib pen. Let's see if there's any ink that has wicked up into the end. And we can see that we got some ink up there, so here we go. This is my handy little... Now the music nib is characterized by being kind of a stub nib and the purpose for the music nib of course would be to be able to have line variation for writing music although I don't note that the line variation on many of these new style music nib pens really provides all that much difference so if I were to if I were to make some symbols here that's not the best bass clef I've ever written in my life, but we'll try it. It's running mean, just a little stiff. Yeah, it's all right. But it's got great flow. That's what these are pen. That's what these pens are known for. Music nib pens, and I didn't really write the. I didn't really get this pen to be able to write music with. One of the most important characteristics that most people want to find with a music nib pen is the character of line. I'm going to turn the paper here because what we get is we get wide lines on the downstroke and we get narrow lines on the side stroke. Most music nib pens, I find you have to use them more vertically to really optimize the line. Like we can see that that really improves. And music nib pens tend to flow very well because they are designed for writing lots of musical notes 
and doing things that music music uh, copyists need to be able to do, and to write all the write all the special symbols and things like that that they need to be able to create. So one of the uh, most difficult tend to be flag notes. So. So, line variation isn't that great with this, but I wasn't expecting it to be. It's good enough, and these aren't really meant for music copying these days. People use them for writing letters and things like that, which is probably what I will be doing with it as well, as I do have other pens that I use for music copying, such as these music pens here and uh, this pen, which has also has a music nib on it as well. So, this is really just for me to enjoy and have for my birthday. And uh, this pen is representative of me in that I being Japanese, but living in the United States, a uh, Japanese pen, but it's red, white, and blue. And it is, of course, a su ocean sunset, sunset over the ocean. So this characterizes my youth as I lived most of my life on the gilded shores of beautiful Paradise Cove. And of course, I always have an affinity for all things nautical and the anchor is uh, right up my alley. So, once again, the Pro Gear Slim. And uh, say, like I said, so many people have made reviews of these pens and how they write and how they work. Uh, as you can see, this one is par for the course. And I plan on getting a lot of enjoyment and a lot of use out of it. Of course, if you want to see other videos about these other pens, you can easily find many reviews about all these things online but um, I hope you enjoyed this quick little look at my new pen and thanks for watching see you next time